Hey everyone, uh, in the next episode of the videos I've shown you how to use features on your car. Uh, I'm going to be going through the instrument panel on the Ranger, uh, which will include things like all your driver assist settings and vehicle settings. Uh, so this will be a little bit of a longer one as there's quite a lot to go through. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. And um, if you've got any questions at the end, uh, drop them in the comments below. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. So what we're going to be looking at here uh, is the buttons on this side of the steering wheel which operate the right hand screen there on the instrument cluster so basically the way they work uh, is you've got your four arrows for directional control uh, and the OK button um, you can use the up and down buttons which will basically cycle through different displays there on the dashboard um, so this is currently in what they call display mode so you can just see there we're currently looking uh, at the rev counter and the fuel gauge uh, if we go down then we also include the temperature gauge as well you then got digital speedo uh, tire pressure monitor the average speed and the distance to empty and then we come back around to the rev counter by pressing the left button it will always take you to the menu as you can see there you've got different um, options to actually sort of go into to adjust and again it works on the same principle of using the uh... so this is considered I guess a little bit like a home um, sort of page for this side of the screen so it's basically giving you the options of what you can actually go into adjust um, so we were just looking at display mode uh, if we use the down arrow and then press OK that will take us to the trip computer uh, so you've got trip 1 and you've got trip 2, they both show the same information and as you can see on the screen if you press and hold the OK button which is in the middle of the arrows on the steering wheel so you literally press and hold that and it will reset the trip meter for you pressing the left button will take you back to the menu um, pretty much anywhere you are on the screen pressing that left button will bring you back to here so from the trip computer we go down to fuel economy press OK uh, so as you can see it's giving you sort of disinformation about your fuel usage history um, whether the stop start system is working um, and your fuel economy so we go left again back to the menu uh, and to driver assist so in here this is all your safety systems that you've got on the car so we press ok to go into there uh, so we, at the minute it's highlighted um, tire monitor so if we press the ok button to go into there so this is where you can actually go in to reset your tyre pressures. So basically on XLT, uh, Wildtrak FX4 and Raptor, um, each wheel has got a tyre pressure sensor in it. Um, so basically we'll tell you, um, you know, if you've got a puncture or something like that, um, and it'll tell you which wheel um, is affected as well, which is quite handy. Um, so all you do is literally you press and hold the OK button to reset your tyre pressures so then the system can actually detect um, the loss in tyre pressure so if we press left it takes us again back to that menu uh, if we press the down button so we, that will take us kind of back to the that particular menu so you can turn on and off the trailer sway control uh, which is basically a system that if you're towing and the car starts to um, sort of get out of control it will actually use the, um, the brakes to slow the vehicle down to stop the well basically whatever you're towing um, sort of fishtailing and losing control of the vehicle. Uh, going down to chimes, so what we do here, any of the items that you choose, you always press the OK button and it will take you into like the sub menu or the other options that you can use for that particular function. Um, so this is basically saying, do you want it to sort of chime at you? Um, in this instance, if it's found a parking slot for the um, active park assist or information uh, chimes as well. So things like, is your door open if you've left your lights on and that type of stuff. Uh, so again, we come back left. We go down to cruise control. Uh, so I'm currently sat in a range of wild track, which comes as uh, standard with adaptive cruise control. So when we press OK to go into that option, that will basically give us the choice of choosing adaptive or normal cruise control. Um, so if you don't like the adaptive or don't get on with it, um, you can just switch the system back to normal so what you do here is you would just press the down button to highlight normal uh, and then press ok and then it just tells you that it's switching it off uh, 
if we go back in we can switch it back to adaptive as well okay so coming back to there um, so the driver alert system again press ok to go into the system um, so that box there is just telling you that the system is actually switched on and then if we go down to the other option and press ok so that's basically telling you um, how long you've got until you actually need to take a rest whilst you're driving um, so it's basically a bit of a safety system that um, you know if you've been on a long journey and you know you're sort of starting to feel tired it's just suggesting you know take a rest uh, so again left button to come out of that and then we're going down to the lane keeping aid so there's a couple of options on here if we go into the mode so that's basically you deciding what you want the car to do um, should you change lanes without actually meaning to as uh, so whether you swerve or you're just not paying attention um, or you literally just don't indicate um, if you don't indicate the system will activate as well so you've got options of what you can do uh, if you choose just alert what that will do is to literally just vibrate the steering wheel for you uh, if you go down to aid that's the part of the system where it will actually steer you back into your current lane uh, then if you choose alert and aid well obviously that will vibrate the steering wheel and also change you back into your current lane as well so you've got an option of, um, of what you want the car to do for you uh, so again pressing left if we go down to intensity uh, and press ok so that's you choosing how much force you want the system to use or how um, much you want the steering wheel to vibrate uh, if you've got that option turned on um, it comes as standard uh, in the normal setting because that's deemed as being sort of the most suitable but you can turn it up or down depending on your preference so we'll come out of that so we've done the lane keeping aid so we press left again to take us back to that menu and then we go down to pre-collision so pre-collision otherwise known as autonomous emergency braking so your first thing you want to do obviously is turn the system on uh, so if we press that button there as you can see we've already got that switched on um, but you can switch it off, I'm not sure why you want to um, if you've got all these safety features I always think you might as well keep them turned on so if we come out of that so again you can adjust the alert sensitivity uh, a bit like we did um, with um, some of the other safety systems so you've got low, normal and high uh, again it's set to normal and you can adjust it based on uh, your own preference the distance indicator you can turn on or off um, so basically what that would do if it's currently off at the moment if we turn it on you can see that little graphic has just popped up on the dashboard so that's just showing you the distance indicator um, should you get too close to someone in front of you and then the option below that is active braking um, which is basically it taking over the braking for you should you get too close to somebody so obviously that one is definitely worth keeping on the next one below that is the traffic signs so the car um, has got a system called traffic sign recognition which is actually now standard on all models of Ranger uh, in 2020 so even on the base model uh, XL so what it will do for you um, as you drive along the camera behind the rear view mirror will actually read the road signs and tell you what the speed limits are um, so you can see two little circles next to um, the odometer on the vehicle and basically what it will do is actually read the speed limit of the, the road sign and then display it there in front of you and what you can actually do with the speed warning that you can see highlighted if we go into that you can actually set it up so it gives you a tolerance um, that you can choose to basically give you a warning so that's obviously switched on if we go down to up to 65 kilometers an hour and then hit the OK button so you're basically choosing a tolerance where you want the car to give you a warning so up to 65 k's an hour, if you were to choose, for example, 3 k's, in 60 zone it would obviously give you a warning at 63, uh, or 53, or 43, just depending on what speed limit you're currently travelling in. So if we press left, and then we go down, we can do an, a separate setting for above 65 k's an hour. So we'll go into that, and you might want to do 4 k's an hour. Um, so there you're looking at 74, 84, etc. Um, pretty self-explanatory with the chimes this is where you actually choose for the car to give you a warning and so basically it beeps at you once you've reached your tolerance level so that's that done there if we come back out 
uh, the tyre monitor we've already done. So that's all the driver assist settings uh, done on that screen. So we'll press left and then that will take us back out to the main menu. Uh, and then we've got settings below that. So we start off with vehicle settings. So let's just go back to the top and start with the alarm system. So with the alarm system, it's got internal sensors in the vehicle, um, which is designed that if someone smashes the window, they'll see the alarm will go off. Not so good if you've got a dog in the car, uh, or if you just want to leave the windows open to you know, circulate some air. So what you can do here is if you go into the alarm system, you can go into the settings, and then you can choose whether you want the interior sensors to work or not. So full guard is basically everything working, the doors, um, should, should someone open the door, the alarm would go off. Plus also, if that someone did smash a window, the interior sensors would detect that and set the alarm off. Now if you want to turn off the sensors, because you're going to leave a dog in the car, or you're going to leave a window open or something like that, what you would do is actually use the arrows to go down to reduced guard, and then press OK. So that turns off the interior sensors for you. Uh, by default, it is actually full guard. So I've turned full guard back on, we'll come back out. The ask on exit is basically every time you turn the engine off to get out of the car, um, you basically get a little message come up on this screen to ask you whether you want to keep it as full guard or whether you want to change it to reduce guard. And then you've got that option obviously as you get out of the car. Uh, the auto engine off is basically the stop start system. Um, this particular car is a bi turbo engine uh, which comes with stop start standard. Um, so it's basically asking you if you want to turn the, that facility off. If we come down to lighting and go into there, um, so all ranges have now got auto high beam headlamps. So that basically means if you're driving down a dark country road, then the car will turn on the high beams automatically for you. But if a vehicle, vehicle comes the opposite way, then it will turn, put the headlights back down so you don't blind people coming the opposite way. Headlamp delay is basically how long the headlights stay on for after you've got out and locked the vehicle. Um, so you've got a few choices there about how long you want the lights to stay on for. Uh, so coming back out, we go down to locks. So this is door locks for the vehicle. So what is, as you can see there, uh, auto unlock. So basically as soon as you turn the ignition off, it will automatically unlock any doors that are locked. Um, there isn't the facility to um, lock the doors anymore as you start driving. Um, on vehicles that have got um, keyless entry. If you've got a vehicle that hasn't got keyless entry, then you can still program it um, to lock the doors as you start driving. Uh, the miss lock is quite a handy feature though. So if you go to lock your vehicle where one of the doors isn't quite shut properly, it will actually sound the horn to let you know. So that's actually quite handy. So I'd personally leave that switched on. With the unlocking of the doors, so this is basically where you can choose whether it does just the driver's door or whether you want it to unlock all doors, and obviously that's a, a personal preference. Uh, this particular vehicle obviously uh, is set up to unlock all doors at once. Uh, and the last option there is a system called Switches Inhibit. And basically what that does is, if the vehicle is locked, uh, if someone smashes the window, they can't um, actually open the door uh, just by pulling the interior door handle. So it basically disengages the interior door handle for you. Um, so obviously quite a handy feature to have. Uh, the next one down is oil life reset. Um, so if you're ever going to um, top up your own oil, you'd go in to reset it yourself. But also quite handily, it's telling you uh, the life expectancy of the current oil. Um, so you've got a good idea um, of how far it's going to be before you, you do an oil change. Then we come down to seat belts. So basically this is just telling you how many seat belts are plugged in. Um, so if you've got kids in the back, you can have a quick look at that. Um, and it will tell you whether they actually got their, uh, their seat belts fastened. And with the wipers, we've got a couple of different things we can do in here. Uh, so as you can see in the blue, the rain sensing wipers have been activated. But we've also got this other function called courtesy wipe. The courtesy wipe is um, linked in conjunction with the, um, the washers. So when you pull the lever to wash and wipe your windscreen, then um, it wipes three times and uh, here's your standard uh, sort of wipe. If you haven't got the courtesy wipe switched on, if you turn the courtesy wipe on, it will do one additional wipe three or four seconds later, 
which will just get rid of any excess water on the windscreen for you which you don't think is handy but um, once you actually use that that's quite a good function to have and that's all the vehicle settings so we need to come back out of that to take us back to the main menu the next one you can see there is called my key uh, so with all Ford vehicles this isn't specific to Rangers um, itself so this is on all Ford vehicles so obviously where you get two keys what you can actually do is program a key that if you were going to give it to someone else say I know somebody who's a, a learner driver or a P plate and you didn't want them to drive too fast listen to the radio use their phone uh, that type of thing then you can create a key and give them the other key so it restricts the top speed of the vehicle um, use of their mobile phone uh, and using the radio so it's actually a really good um, sort of safety feature particularly for parents out there that are worried about their uh, their kids taking their car for a drive so basically it tells you how many admin keys we've got and how many my keys we've got so at the minute this this car um, has just got two standard keys nothing's been programmed um, and the next function down is basically just how you actually create the key to, to give to somebody else so coming back out of there um, that's all your settings basically um, I know that's sort of fair bit to take in but the the usage of the buttons is actually quite easy and um, so hopefully I didn't confuse anybody with that but um, yeah if you if you missed a bit just rewind the video slightly and um, hopefully it will all make a bit of sense so I hope that all made a bit of sense for you um, I appreciate that was sort of fairly in depth uh, but on that sort of right hand side screen of the instrument cluster there's actually a fair bit going on um, so that's why I decided to make this video to show you how everything works if you've got any questions on anything that you've watched in the video uh, please leave them below uh, or get in touch with me directly um, only happy to help it's not a problem at all um, because I say there's, there's quite a lot to learn um, with all these new safety systems on cars these days there will be some more videos coming um, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live I look forward to seeing you again soon.